Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like fuck. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, coming to you live from my swanky Seattle apartment. <laughs> you probably hear the Perlocopter up there on the roof. Oh, yeah, the Perlocopter. That's right, going off to send everybody their Pearls of Wisdom necklaces, NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklaces, for you subscribers out there. Thank you for all you subscribers. And, uh, well, we've been doing a series here uh, about every NHL team in alphabetical-ish order, or Perlo alphabetical <laughs> order. <laughs> like, yeah, but, okay, Perlo-ish uh, order. Yeah, I like the perlo -ish. I generally keep the P's with the P's and the N's with the N's and everything. There you go. Yeah, all right. It's not necessarily, you know. So, but whatever. We get it done. So, we, <laughs> like, for instance, we did Montreal Canadiens, and now we're doing the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, what what an alphabet. Yeah, that's yeah, a good alphabet. Yeah, we'll take I, that one. It's, it's very ish. -ish. Yes. Very -ish -ish. It's the Perlo alphabet. Yes. And who is this? Wow, this is somebody from the fine www.steelflyers community uh, and network. You have not checked it out. You have to, must go over there, check out www.steelflyers. It's a growing community that we're doing over there. And it's incredible. All sports, going to be a live feed through it. It's going to be video. Uh, uh, All kinds of fun. Yeah, I'm trying to spit it out. It's going to be. <laughs> Vloggers, All sports network bloggers writers everything for every team every sport yep insane it's going to be amazing but steel how are you doing there big guy in the pa hey i'm doing and so check this out right so not only can you go to steelflyers.com and check out all the great things on there but you can go to www.steelflyers.com slash link slash NHL Perlo Wisdom. Oh, you got to go to that page. See, yeah. that's the page you need to really go to and check out this guy right here because he is the great prognosticator, the great Perlo Wisdom. Yes, so. you can find all my work there. That is for sure. And we're bringing <laughs> a lot of fine people into there. We got John from Off the Wall Hockey. Woo. Yeah, man. Ooh. So, Anyways, we're going to be doing some work with him, too, and many of other other people. Uh, but today, it's just going to be mono on mono, me and Steel doing the Columbus Blue Jackets. And he made uh, so back to the OG. This is the OG, right? This is how it first started for me was with you. Yes. Yeah. Back to the original. Yes. Yeah. The first one we ever did was you and I. Steve. Yeah, That's man. <laughs> that was a couple cool. months ago. Yeah, we got to do one of those again. The uh, About the owners and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, Elephant I... in the Room podcast. That's going to be good times. So, Columbus Blue Jackets made some, a lot of amazing moves. Yes, Kekalina, and my gosh. He, get, yeah. he loses Panarin, he loses Bobrovsky, he lets them go or couldn't sign him or what have you. Didn't and then, it uh, doesn't skip a beat. And now he's got the summer to do some di things. And what what kind of things did you like that uh, Kekal the ke everybody we love the Kekalina. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got a little something stuck in your Kekalina there. Okay. Yeah, you got a little. Yeah, you got a little something <laughs> stuck in your. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing that really kind of blew me away, and I was maybe a little bit surprised about this was the whole Max Domi uh, oh. trade the yeah. Columbus did and pulled off and whatever you want to call it to get him away from Montreal. Um, I think right there is going to be one of the key factors for uh, the blue jackets, especially next year or this coming year. Um, you're right. They lost Panera and they lost Bobrovsky. They lost top scorers, top defense, top goalie. And it didn't matter they lost in the second round to Tampa Bay. Um, I mean, they played really well uh, through the round robin. They they played really well um, against Toronto. They had that big, long uh, overtime game against Toronto in the playoffs, and then they played really well against uh, Tampa Bay. But I think towards the end there, they were pretty much done, kind of like the Flyers. We kind of ran out of gas there towards the end, and, and Tampa Bay just still had more left in the tank. But – all things considered, with losing all those guys, they still went 33 and 22 and 15. 
okay, for fifth in the Metropolitan. So Tortorella did a really good job with bringing them guys around, and I really think that the Max Domi um, addition to Columbus is going to make them that much more dangerous, especially in the Metropolitan, um, especially this year, playing against teams like the Flyers, like New York, like, the, you know what I mean? I just have a feeling that they're going to be a claw in the works, you know what I mean, for us, because we always play those guys a couple of times a year, and it's just Columbus is going to be a much harder team to play this coming year, and I think a big reason to that is because of Max Domi. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they made a few other moves there. They brought in uh, a big veteran in Miko Koivu. Oh, yeah, Koivu, yeah. yeah. That was a surprise, too. I wasn't expecting Koivu to... You know what I mean? I wasn't expecting him to just jump ship like that so quickly after just coming back into the NHL. You know what I mean? And then, like, right away, okay, here, ship him off to the next team. Like, you know, when he was when he was playing back here for the longest time, he would just bounce back and forth to different teams for a while there, and then he went off to Russia, right? Uh, Miko Koivu? Yeah. Well he, well, he was in Minnesota his whole career, but he went to Russia – Kind of when all of this went down or went back home, which I believe is Finland, but went uh, back okay, home. Okay. And then, and oh, okay, then it was, wait, I'm thinking uh, of somebody else. My mistake. My mistake. I was thinking of somebody else. I think you were yeah. thinking of Galchenyuk. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I got yeah. a little Galchenyuk in my throat. No, yeah. I wasn't thinking of him. No, no, no. Okay. Well, whoever it was, but Miko, he was a he was a long time Minnesotan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but I was different surprised. Player, different player that I was speaking of. So I was surprised as well because I thought maybe I thought he was in that position where it was going to be Minnesota or nothing. You know, yeah, he'd been there his whole here. career, and I did, I thought maybe he would retire at thirty seven years old rather than shift over to oddly enough the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, I guess he just must have a fire in him to win a cup, and he thinks that Columbus might be able to do that. They might. I mean, they might. They have as good a shot, shot as anybody, right? I mean, the the fact that they're so far under the cap, I mean, they got a lot of money under the cap, and there's some players out there that potentially could help bring the cup to Columbus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. Why haven't they signed these guys? Yeah, you, well, that's the thing. Kekalainen seems to work on a different level than everybody else. He trades Murray to New Jersey, and uh, which he's injury prone. It was difficult. He got a fifth round pick for him. He got rid of some cap space. I get the deal. Uh, he traded uh, uh, Nudavara. That's two defensemen off the roster. Uh, which is going to leave them with Kukan and a guy named Andrew Peak, who they have been really bringing right. up for quite some time. But right. then, like you said, like you just mentioned, okay, you got the, you did all that, but now you got nine million dollars in cash space, and, and are, are we are we done here? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you seem to be missing some stuff. Uh. <laughs> yeah, is Hoffman? We got Hoffman still out there. You think maybe? I. I, of all the teams out there, I, he's the one that makes the most sense in Columbus. He just does. His yeah. his style of play, the fact that he'd be playing under Tortorella, you know, maybe maybe that's why. Maybe that's why that hasn't happened because it would be playing under Tortorella. I mean, you look, you know, look, we have to admit that we know that you have a a bromance with Tortorella as coach. Okay, come on. I wouldn't necessarily say that. I just think he's the best of this generation, but I wouldn't (laughs) say a bromance. Actually, I have a bromance bromance with Barry Trotz. All right, all right. Barry Trotz is my favorite coach. Tortorella is the best coach. Okay. Uh, It actually kind of pains me to say that that's true, but I do believe it's true. Okay. But that might be the reason. Because he is a whole different animal to play with or play for. Maybe. You, you know what I mean? And to, to have a team that much under the cap in a year like we're in right now, where we're going to have shorter off, you know, shorter camps, shorter preseason if there is one, and a shorter season to begin with. You know what I mean? So it doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't be spending some of this money unless – they might have a lot of free agents that they have to take care of next year. 
which that doesn't seem like that's the case because they got rid of Panera and they got rid of Bobrovsky. They, they pretty much shed all that stuff the year before. Yeah. Um, well, they, they have Felino coming off the books and then uh, Riley Nash. Also, you know what? That doesn't even bring up the fact that Brandon Dubinsky is probably going on the IR. So they have actually got about 13 or $14 million to play around with here. And now that's they, another hole. Yeah. There's a couple people to sign. They have Oliver Bjorkstrand, but they're not in cap. They're not, they don't really have cap problems until they got to sign Jones and Wierenski in 2022-23. So, uh, but a two-year deal for Hoffman does make sense. It could be simply because they are just bartering back and forth as to how much it's going to cost. Hoffman could be waiting uh, for Nashville or somebody to try to up the dollars or whatever the case may be, and that's really where they want to go. There's a couple go- other guys like Granlin and stuff out there. I don't know. All I know is with Kekalein, and you just never know what this guy's going to do. No. Uh, I never I never saw that Max Stomy trade coming, not from a mile away. And I don't even know why, because it kind of made sense. It was mostly because who are you going to trade? And who does he trade? He trades Josh Anderson, a guy who was injured all last year. Yeah, yeah, man. What? Okay, so that just goes to show you that Montreal really wanted to get rid of him. Yeah, so why if did they took that else? deal? Yeah, you know what I mean. That just there goes wasn't, to show. There wasn't a better deal out there, you don't think? Maybe that's where Max Domi wanted to go. Hmm. I don't know if that really matters. Montreal was kind of like you're going. They didn't. He didn't have a no trade clause, so he would have had to go wherever. That's they, true. That's true. Do you think? Look. So do you don't? Do you think that uh, he'll thrive, or do you think he'll get buried? Well, uh, you gave me my four minutes of Tortorella. So should I start now or what? <laughs> <laughs> Click. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Max Stormy. Max Stormy, I can't talk about this unless I talk about Tortorella. Do I think he's going to thrive? My inkling will say that he will because I do believe Tortorella is one of the finest coaches. If he can't survive with Tortorella as a coach, yeah. he's likely not going to be able to do it. Um, Anybody else? You look at all the guys that Tortorella said, okay, trade that guy away, and almost always it doesn't look good for the other team. When they traded Joe Hansen in for uh, we were just talking about Nashville and Nashville. we talked about Seth Jones, yeah. Everybody at the time thought, okay, that's a nice little trade. And I was saying, if Tortorella doesn't think Joe Hansen's a number one, almost for sure he's not a number one. Guess what? He's not a number one. Uh, Duclair left for Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. He had a good year. Yeah. But guess what? Now Duclair's a problem child in Ottawa, and he's heading off somewhere else. So is Max Stormy going to do it? It's always going to be up to him, right? We know that. You can have the greatest coach in the world, but if a guy doesn't want to get ahead of his buddy, probably is just choosing not to. He's not going to. All I can say is that if he can't do it with torts, he's probably not going to do it anywhere. So this is your time to shine, buddy. I think he has the talent. Um, I th- we've seen that he has the talent. Um, we've seen that he has the ability to play top six minutes, but is Tortorella going to give him those top six minutes? I, I think so. I think so. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I think you have to bring him in depending, like I said, it all depends on his attitude. I don't know anything about his attitude. All uh-huh. I know is that Arizona, out. Montreal, uh, out. Out. And it wasn't like my. It wasn't like oh, we that we're trying to work something different. It was we're getting rid of Max Domi. So yeah. that's that's the only thing. One time is a okay. Yeah. Two times is a wait a second. Yeah. You know what I mean. So this might be it here, Mister Domi. So because yeah. we know he's watching. Well, you know he's watching. We yeah, know he's watching. I hope he's not pissed off at us right now for well, saying no, this. Well, no, man, we're uh, hoping he does well. Uh, we uh, we do hope you do well, Max. And I know you're watching, and you and your dad, <laughs> you and your dad, Ty, are sitting there having your hot chocolate. Yeah, watching right. Some, watching some 
watching some my NHL pearls of wisdom while getting all prepared for the Steel Flyers website. But uh, <laughs> he had 44 uh, points in 71 games. This is a guy who had 72 points in Montreal the year before, right? So and now all of a sudden he's out of Montreal. What did he do? Um, what well, did it, he do? The problem was that he apparently will only play center. And he will not play on the wing, just period. And the coach, there was friction between him and the coach and all that stuff like that. Uh, and he okay. will not, that was a big thing. He will only okay. play center and that's it. And well, he's as going. As an ex player, as an ex player, uh -huh. okay. Um, what, it, that's not the right attitude to have, is it? <sighs> well, or yeah. is it? I mean, look, I understand. That's why oh, guys get paid big bucks. Yeah. I mean, I understand. You know, look, um, Claude Giroux got his money, signed his contract to be a center. Yeah. Okay. If the coach wants to put him on the wing, that's the coach. You see what I'm saying? But he's making center money. Yeah. Yeah. And right. That's the thing. I think Max is saying, if, if you play me, I'm only young. I want to be a center in the most important position. So I get paid like a center. Don't be putting me on the wing and then telling me you're paying wing money, blah, 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 blah. I think that's what's going to happen here. So, ah, but how many other players are going to say that in the league? How many players are going to play the wing and be happy to be in the NHL and all that? Is that the right thing? I can't tell you. All I do know is you've been thrown out of two organizations and you're only 25 years old. So... What so you're asking me how is it going to be Tortorella? I think if you can't get if you can't play for him, you're not going to be able to play for anybody. That's as far as I'm going to say for that. So we had two more things that happened that I wanted to bring up. Uh, we had we had Murray and and Murray going to New Jersey. New Jersey injured injured all the time. Yeah, I got the fifth round pick. Uh, whatever that he was injured a lot. Yeah. What do you think of that? Do you think what do you think about New That's Jersey worth taking? It. That's yeah. worth it. It's worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, look, uh, it's – I have, no matter what sports you play, availability. If you're not available to play, then you're not helping the team. Yeah. And if, and if that means you're not on the ice, then that – why am I paying you? I, I am yeah. a firm believer in not paying people that are not on the ice. Why yeah. am I paying you to sit in the press box? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're injured – Okay, I can understand that, but if it's a constantly, you know, over and over and over and over and over, I, I don't have money for that. Yeah. And, 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 and the amount of time that you're not available is far exceeding the amount of time that you are available, so it doesn't constitute the amount of money you're being paid. I hate yeah. to break it down in such a horrible business-like way. That's but just the way it is, though. It? <laughs> it's just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, Murray is injured an awful lot and, uh, they tried and tried. They went a long time. I mean, Murray's like 27, 28 years old. He was a second overall pick and, you know, they tried him for a really long time and, uh, he moved on to New Jersey and I hope things work out for him there. I don't know how there's a lot of room in New Jersey to play. Exactly. So, you know, that's um, the other thing too. That might have to do with Max Domi too. Look, we all know that every once in a while, a player just needs that new scenery. They just need that new message. You know what I mean? And maybe um, maybe during his time in Arizona, because we know of the past of what's going on in Arizona, that was a rather tumultuous time down there with coaching and ownership and all that stuff. And that just hasn't been a good all the way around. So the fact that he came out of Arizona – Okay, I'm more a little bit concerned about the fact that he was able to put that many points up in Montreal, said that he wanted to play center. The coach was like, no, nah, I need you to play wing. He was like, no, I want to play center. And then so they had a falling out. I, I would have to be like, look, here's the money you got paid. So you're getting paid now. Does it really matter where I tell you where to play? Yeah, I know that's <laughs> that's going to be the thing here. Uh, it's going to be interesting. What is going to happen when Tortorella says, I think you're better on the wing to talk to Max Domi. And then are we going down the same road or is, or is he, uh, is Max Domi better as a center to tell you the honest truth? Like I'm, I'm, I'm not even convinced he may be better 
as a center myself from what I've watched because uh, I, I saw him on the wing a lot because they kept on putting him on the wing. Now, Claude Julian is a fantastic coach. We know that. Agreed. And uh, it was, was Tippett there or it's talk. It, I think, was there with uh, in Arizona with Ty Do- with uh, Max Domi, correct? Uh, I think it was talk it there at that time. I could be mm. I could be wrong on that. Uh, I can't even remember who the coach was before. Tockett's only been in Arizona, I think, two seasons, two or three okay. seasons. So, so maybe it was, but either that or it was Dave Tippett. So either way, both great coaches, and both of them thought you were better. Yeah, but what I mean, though, is that the, the ownership in, in Arizona hasn't been the best, and the team has pretty much been tumultuous times right. the last couple of years. So that's why right. I kind of gave him a pass on the Arizona sure. left. And Montreal did too, and that's what happened. They traded Galchenyuk, another one that was having difficulties in his move from team to team, and uh, then they, you know, to there to get him, thinking, okay, Arizona's in the hot mess, and he'll be better here. But Claude Julian thought he was better on the wing. So is Tortorella going to think he's better on the wing? And what's going to happen when he says that? Mm-hmm. Finally, is Tortorella finally going to tell him, you know, convince him that? You're gonna. You got to play. You're gonna have to play. What was the contract he signed? Uh, I believe. I believe he is a restricted free agent right now. So no, they just signed him, right? They signed him too, didn't they? Yeah. 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 Sorry about that. We just didn't. I think it's two years, like five something mil a year. Yeah, two million or four point four four six for two years. Four six for two years, right? So that's that is a typical developmental bridge deal for a guy his age yep. for a, a typical winger or center. Mm-hmm. I mean, bridge deals are bridge deals. Yep. And it doesn't matter if you play wing or center. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yep. So here's the thing. You're getting paid f- forward money. You're going to play as a forward. Now, whether that's going to be center or wing depends on Again, where we need you. This is where the this is where. Um, so, anyways, we're going to now project how good all of this is going to be for Columbus. Uh, but this is where it has all of the teams have said the very thing you said, I'm sure. And he said, "No, nope, I'm not playing wing," and he caused so much of a stir about it that they ended up moving him out. So. Dano actually started getting pissed off because Dano wants a second. Here's this kid saying that he's a second line center and I'm like 28, 29 years old. And you're saying you're better than me right now. Then move me. Then he said, basically he said, move me. If you think Max is better than I am and they move Max. So let's just go from there. Where do you think Columbus is going next year based on the moves they made? Also, well, to bring in Greg Arenko, also, yeah. they brought in from yeah, yeah, yeah. played for Buffalo, went to KHL. Kekalainen is one of the best European scouts there is. I imagine he'll do well yeah. here. How do you like this team moving up next year? You think they're better? Um, I think the back home is late to see. I don't think we can judge that until after we've seen 20 or so games of that experiment because I think that's what it is, is it's an experiment. Their goalies uh, with Mateus and Corpusalo and Elvis, that's a pretty decent little backstop back there for them. Um, they won them a lot of games this past year. They played really well in the playoffs. I think you're going to need to come into this year with three goalies no matter what, okay, just because it's going to be a condensed season and it's going to be a compact season. They finished fifth in the uh, division last year, and I think they might be right around the same. I think they're going to be right about the same. They're going to be dangerous. They're going to be the team you don't want to play, but I think they might run out of gas after the first round or second round. Yeah, I don't see all that much of an improvement either. Um, the the tie. Ty- Getting Max could be a huge because they were using Boone Jenner in there last year. Right. And then you still got Tessier to come in. He had a good year. There's a lot of things that could happen really well here. But like you, I don't think they're finished. I think the big question mark 
is what do they do with that $14 million? If they get Hoffman or something like that, Somebody. then then I think then they're talking about a team that's going to fight. And um, I think I've got about maybe two more minutes of Tortorella talk here. So I Wait, hold on. Let me check the clock. Yeah, you're good. You still got another two minutes. Tortorella still is the greatest coach. I will not. So they're going to be very good. Yeah. You can almost be assured of that yeah. simply because of that. His system and the way he plays, the way he gets his team going and everything like that. On paper, most teams probably – this team probably doesn't make the playoffs with other – with maybe there's three or four coaches in the league that can bring this team into the okay, playoffs. Yeah, I can see that. Tortorella, Trotz, you know, we know who they are. Um, so – but with him there, I give him. But I, I kind of agree with you at this point. I can't see them being much better than they were last year with the moves that they made. So we're sitting in that. We just got to see what they're going to do with the rest of that cap. Pretty well, much. my friend, this has been Steel Flyers bringing pearls for days. Did you hear this? <laughs> it's great, wasn't it? I hope you all enjoyed it. I certainly did enjoy it. Oh, yeah, it's man. Great. It's great having you, Steel. Uh, thanks for coming in on this. Uh, everybody get over to that Steel, www.steelflyers website. Get in there early. Watch it grow. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, what do you got? What's your Twitter handle there, big guy? Steel Flyers at 52 on Twitter. But you really need to go and check out Perlo's great stuff uh, at www.steelflyers.com slash link slash NHL Perlo Wisdom. It has the link to all his uh, contacts. You can get in touch with him on Twitter. It has the uh, links to all of his shows. You can see all the shows that he does. Man, you can get all the great Perlos right there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all in the yeah. one-stop shop on his webpage. That's right, yes. the NHL Perlo Wisdom webpage. That's www.steelflyers.com slash links slash NHL Perlo Wisdom. It's got my Twitter handle in there. It's yep. uh, my, my Perlo's NHL POW. Yep. If you YouTube forget it, channel, all that stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. And comment down in that comment section. Hit the subscribe. Tell us all about what you think about this fine programming. We uh, we enjoyed having you, Steel. We enjoy all of you. Have a great day, everybody. That's our full forty-two. And lots of love to you.